everything sitting in all these containers behind us? Everything. Longshoremen telling me some of these containers have been sitting here for six months, with a shortage of truck drivers to get the goods on the highway and into stores. It's not just making things harder to find, it's making them more expensive. Today we face an economy that's in transition. And as part of that transition, we are seeing high prices for some of the things that people have to buy. But the reality is that the only way we're going to get to a place where we work through this transition is if everyone in America and everyone around the world gets vaccinated. The shortages and supply chain collapse that reared their head in 2021 escalate in 2022. This is a logistical certainty. The chain reaction set off by the mandates is just beginning. The corporate media and the politicians don't want to talk about the blockades by port workers and truckers or the rebellion brewing among the military and frontline workers. They don't want you to think about the implications of firing millions of people at the same time, sending families with children into poverty while simultaneously withdrawing social safety nets for the non-compliant. Doing so would make it obvious that the tragedy about to unfold was neither unforeseen nor accidental. A high-ranking FDNY source tells CBS2 as many as 20% of fire companies could close and their ambulance fleet could be impacted as well. If the mayor doesn't budge on his mandate, ralliers say it could mean lives will be lost. This is really an absolutely unnecessary threat to uh, the lives of New Yorkers. There is no crisis. Right now, 8% of New York City firefighters are out with fire-related injuries, and 1 16th of that number is out with COVID. Hi, my name is Heather Cobble, and I'm a registered nurse here in San Diego. I actually resigned from my job yesterday as a registered nurse because of this state mandate to be vaccinated. I was no problem working in the healthcare system over the last 18 months without a vaccine. But now, all of a sudden, I'm a threat to public health? Tell me where this makes sense. I don't understand how you guys don't see the bigger picture here. What you're doing is you're creating a health care crisis. If the clowns running this circus get their way in your country, food rationing and social benefits will be tied to health passports. Troublemakers will disappear into quarantine. Regional and selective lockdowns will put the non-compliant under house arrest. Contact tracing and forced testing for any illness deemed a risk to public health provides the perfect smokescreen for a crackdown on dissent. Austria is warning people unvaccinated against COVID-19 that they could be put into lockdown if hospital intensive care units come under too much strain. This isn't just a power grab being attempted here. It has all of the hallmarks of something far more ominous. If you want it spelled out, look up the Georgia Guidestones. This operation has been planned for years, and it is scheduled to continue into the late 2020s. Food crisis and multiple rounds of coercive experimentation will be accompanied by events that shut down critical infrastructure and communications. It's pretty obvious who will be blamed for these events, and it's also pretty obvious what comes next. If all were to go according to plan, by the end of this crisis, the political, corporate, and religious elites would have ushered in a global dictatorship that endures for generations. Their fourth industrial revolution would be implemented by sleight of hand and brute force. The population, after having been reduced by some 80 or 90 percent, would be totally enslaved through a combination of AI-powered social credit systems and central bank digital currencies. Every move will be tracked and traced, dissent punished instantly and with no legal recourse, even the inner sanctum of the mind be stripped of privacy. The good news is that all is not going according to plan, not by a long shot. The wheels were already coming off of this thing before the main event even started. But like a band of hapless robbers in the middle of a botched heist, the elites are pushing forward even as errors accumulate and compound. They haven't fully connected the sirens in the distance with their ultimate demise. To say this ends badly for them would be an understatement. But that's only part of the story. What about those who resist? What happens to those who stand by their convictions against all odds? We're going to describe how this pans out in the form of a story. In this story, the forces of freedom prevail. Not only are the architects of this crime brought to justice, but the entire infrastructure of surveillance and oppression is definitively dismantled. And the meek 
inherit the Earth. In the early days of the new Iron Curtain, all of humanity faced an existential choice. Would they hand over their bodily autonomy and most basic rights to maintain the comforts of the modern world? Would they become complicit in an atrocity in an attempt to save themselves? Or would they follow their hearts and do what is right, even at great sacrifice? This was not a decision that would just affect their own lives. It would determine what kind of world they'd leave behind. For many, families with children in particular, this dilemma was terrifying. They were looking down the barrel of homelessness, poverty, and expulsion from society. Even leaving the country without a medical procedure was now illegal in many jurisdictions, and it was becoming increasingly clear that forced procedures were never really off the table. Scary stuff. For some, the stress would prove too much. The mental health crisis that had been festering since the pandemic would suddenly go parabolic. This was a wild card variable that the elite had not properly accounted for. When faced with losing everything, human psyche can enter an altered state. Medical professionals would typically diagnose this as shock, but from a spiritual perspective, our connection to our bodies is shaken. That sense of distance from the physical is literal. The veil between the worlds grows thin. Taken to an extreme, humans, like many animals, can actually die from a serious fright. Fear is the first enemy. It shuts down the creative and rational parts of the brain. It prevents one from seeing the solutions right before their eyes. It was fear that got you into this mess. The cowardice and conformity of a lost generation made it possible. These infantilized adults who hide from all danger and would do anything and everything to protect the mortal coil did not fare so well in the coming chapters. The root of all fear is death. Coming to terms with death is the root of all courage. Calm your mind and you will realize that the situation is not nearly as hopeless as it might seem. The powers that be want you to think that you are alone, but this is a lie. We are legion. As isolated individuals, they can make you feel powerless, but together, we are a force of nature. Look, just wait us out, will you? Just, just, just wait four or five weeks and then you'll be able to go to the pub. No, if you make the judgment, to not get vaccinated and you reckon you can wait out us or the publican or whoever you want to think you're waiting out you won't wait out the virus because the virus will be here for a long time and your only protection against it is being vaccinated this will be well into 2022 well and truly into 2022 then we're going to get into booster issues so it won't be your first and second dose it'll be have you have you have you had your third and then the other issue will be well who knows what uh, variants coming who knows? These lily-handed elites who've never worked an honest day in their lives want to kick millions of intelligent, free-thinking individuals out of the workforce? Hmm. They think we need them so much that we'll eventually give in? I don't think so. What if, instead of groveling at their feet, we withdraw all support? What if the suddenly unemployed built an alternative economy in parallel? What if instead of just complaining, they disobey? There are so many forms of civil disobedience and non-compliance, so many ways to tear the system apart from within. Imagine what would happen if this idea started spreading among the police, military, and frontline workers. Imagine it spread among the truckers and port workers already digging in. We can win this thing, and we will. This is where it starts.